<coughs> Melrose, North Reading, both with Reading, Stoneham, Lakefield, Wilmington, Winchester, and Hoover. I spoke with uh, Ms. Herbeck, and there's no, all it is, it just has the town working within this program for the first time homeowners. It also counts toward our executive order 418, which is the affordable housing uh, counts for the town, which we've been pursuing since um, I've been here. And we've gotten a few more homes on with the uh, Bill and Terrace program over there. And so I think this is a good program just to keep uh, <coughs> bring our numbers up even more so uh, under the housing program. Uh, again, I wasn't aware that we weren't uh, I was a aware. certified community to participate in the program or have our residents participate in the program. And it's just a another uh, opportunity uh, for individuals of low and moderate income means to either stay or to relocate or to locate into our community. And I think it's a fabulous idea and opportunity that we should avail ourselves of. Um, so when I got the call, you know, personally, I, I buy into it rather quickly. Uh, I don't know what the other members of the board feel. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know. Okay. <clears throat> I, I guess I'm looking at this with a very open mind and what comes to me is <laughs> it sounds too good to be true it's usually not true and I'm not saying this isn't true but I read the about the fourth sentence in this in the letter that they want us to write the town of North Reading is also interested in being included in the down payment closing cost program that is available now what's that mean that means is uh, we have not expressed our interest in being a participating community in the program. Oh, All it okay. takes is an action of the board, which would then provide the opportunity for applicants who are from this town or looking to move to this town yeah. to take advantage of the, the soft second program, which provides them with additional funds and low down payments, uh, some subsidies basically on the, uh, on the down payments required to purchase a home. It uh, doesn't commit the town to putting That's any funds what I'm up. Right. That's no funds for no, no our funds for the town. Default on a loan. None of that. This is what I'm trying to. There is to no do. guarantees uh, uh, on behalf of the uh, by the town on behalf of anybody to be right. made. All we're doing is we're looking to uh, let this uh, the housing partnership program state level know mm -hmm. that the town of North Reading is interested in allowing our residents to participate in the program. Uh, again, okay. if I had known. Four years ago, I probably would have brought this. Yeah, the funding that never came forward. before. Yes. No, it's it's just what just so happens that someone had, a, had applied to yeah. the program for, for a grant, yeah. or an application for this particular program, and found out that North Reading was not yeah. a participating community. Mr. Rowe. Does this authorize funds just for, for North Reading? It is for homes in North Reading. There are other communities that, that are participants in the program, which then allows for eligibility for their residents. We just don't happen to be on the list. Right, but I mean, this says it's the chairman assigned a tax letter of interest to receive funds. Those funds would be allocated to North Reading. <coughs> okay, Mr. Murphy. This is, this is a, uh, a great program. It's been around a long time. I know people that have participated in it, and, and basically what happens is first time home buyers can apply. Um, there's a certain set amount of funds available, there are different <laughs> participating financial institutions. It could be that the reason this is coming before us now is that Reading Cooperative is, is preparing to open a branch office uh, here in North Reading, um, and, and they'll be the participating financial institution in this case. Um, and what Community Service Network does is helps the applicants through that grant process in conjunction with the financial institution. There's no funds expended on our behalf, and there's no funds given to us either. Um, we'll just be a participant in the program um, and then the first time home buyers get educated on the process uh, of buying a home and they have to actually get a certificate in order to qualify for the grant. So it's a great program for first time home buyers. I have someone on my staff who went through this process yeah. in, in Charlestown and purchased his, his first home. So it's a, it's a great program. I think it's uh, something we should do. <coughs> we should move forward with. Yeah, three of us, Chair. <laughs> Does that does the home buyer pay them, John? How how do they make their money? I mean, it's it, somebody it, has to pay. A lot of it's done. A lot of it's, it's only done curiosity through, question. A lot of it's done through grants and, and state oh, okay. funds. Oh, okay. So oh, I federal, see. Yeah, okay. there are federal and state funds that that come funneling down into these yeah. programs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Depending upon the program, 
it's, uh, it's a combination. It could be a combination of both of them. Federal right. and state. Yeah. Participating, the participating financial institution could put together I a first-time homebuyer program with funds that they get uh, okay. from either a special deposit program they're running or they can yeah. borrow funds from my bank for a program like this. One of the so things is, uh, Mr. Murphy happens to be first vice president of the Federal Home Loan Bank, so he's familiar with it. I happen to be a bank examiner, which examines banks for uh, CRA compliance, the uh, Community Reinvestment Act, but we would give banks such as Running Cooperative Bank credit and recognition for the participation of these programs and running these first-time home <coughs> programs, uh, thereby if they re achieve an outstanding rating, Commonwealth of Massachusetts will then uh, deposit in the financial institution that have achieved an outstanding rating hundred thousand dollars to be going to deposit and more and allow them to participate in other programs yeah okay so um, it, it's just uh, an opportunity okay. for low yep. moderate income borrowers to sounds good to me to come up with some additional <laughs> down payment assistance <coughs> soft seconds uh, if they live in the home for a certain period of time sometimes they're forgiven sometimes they pay back at the sale of the uh, property the program then gets repaid so that it's just a uh, recycling of funds in a self-sustaining system uh, with the assistance of uh, state and federal grants. Any other questions? Or I'm all set. Accept a motion, Mr. Murphy. Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the chairman to sign the attached letter of interest to receive funds for a soft second loan program to the Community Service Network Incorporated. Second. Seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> Again, I appreciate the uh, personal call that you brought it to our attention. Yes. Uh, and with the price of housing these days and the affordability, uh, a lot of people do need some assistance with the down payment just to just to get into the program. As Mr. Murphy pointed out, people who do participate uh, do have to go through some sort of credit counseling and uh, get a certificate in order to be eligible for the program. So it's a good idea. It's great. Item number six, uh, Mr. Younger, you want to okay. explain the situation? Yes, um, in fact, town council is here um, also. Um, as the board remembers, uh, there was a land court case regarding um, uh, Zillig uh, and MPG Realty Trust, John Magazoo of Town of North Reading, uh, which was basically a paper road issue about releasing our interest in paper roads that actually never existed on some projects up in the Valley Road area. Uh, council and CPC had reviewed it, and uh, they both recommended that the uh, board vote to accept the agreement for judgment and authorize uh, town council to sign the agreements uh, to release whatever interest there were in these roads by the town. Okay. Uh, you know, Mr. Pierce, CPC, I know you have no. no issues with it at all. The CPC's reviewed it. And it's just a bunch of paper streets right. up off of Valley Road, which is off of Central Street. Right. And I forget what the name of the development is up there that's going in, but there's a name uh, to it. Deer Run. Deer Run, okay. And uh, in order to get clear title to the property. And uh, also to do their road and their street improvement plan, and to, uh, there's also a bit of property that's being beat to the abutters. So, uh, it's all part of the fun process. So, in order to effectuate the whole thing, the town has to relinquish interest in what would be paper streets, which are shown on the footprint on a map, but are not accessible generally. So right. We have a few of those around town. Right. Yeah. It's probably shown in the center. Right. There is an old plan made. There is an old plan that shows all these. And, and, and as you stated, there are a number of them in town that have never been built. Many of them don't meet any meet the uh, width requirements as far as right away even. So uh, it's just as well to clean up the Georgia Town Council, obviously you concur. Yes. Yes, Deborah Ellison uh, in my office has reviewed the papers and uh, she's uh, she's approved them. So uh, what we would need is a vote by the selectmen to authorize Deborah to execute those uh, settlement documents. And this is resulted again in the fact is that the developer filed some sort of action in land court, land so court, right, land court right. which we had to respond to rather than they never came to us first, I don't think, to just say can we clean this up? They just 
with the land court first, and then we had to respond. Right. right. So and this clarifies it so no further legal costs are incurred. Yeah. So essentially, this land court decision is necessary for them to, to continue with their subject. Okay. Any other questions or comments from members of the board? No. Okay. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the agreement for judgment and authorize town council to sign the agreements on our behalf with regard to land court cases number 270161, 270162, 270163, and number 270474. Second. Seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Unanimous. Okay, why don't we go to town administrator's report? Then we'll do all the new business. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good, um, good. If we go to yours first, it might short circuit some of us. <laughs> some of us, <laughs> yeah. And maybe not. And then maybe we not. Might we might add to it. Add to it. We might add a few more. We might add a few more. Okay. <laughs> uh, first of all, it was brought up at the um, last elections meeting regarding Route 62, regarding. Um, the um, responsibilities by the town for the right of ways. I sent a copy of the letter to the board members that was addressed on June 30th, 1994, uh, from the Mass Highway Department to the Department of Public Works, uh, which stated regarding the Route 62 project, uh, the town will be responsible for the design of the project and the costs associated with them. The town will also be responsible for any additional right of way, either permanent or temporary in nature, and the costs associated with such. And we stated that earlier at the meeting, but just to show the board that this was submitted to the town back in 94 and accepted um, to do such. Also, the uh, Mass Highway Department is scheduled to advertise the project on July 14th. So it's, it's moving along, and if they hold to that date. Well, the dates could get moved out right. a little bit, but it, it's getting closer. It's getting closer. Not that we're really looking forward to it, but. Major undertaking that certainly will have a significant impact on the community. Steve, uh, yes, Warren. Uh, yes. What, what are the limits of the work? In other words, how far on 62 does it go from where to where? If I recall correctly, I thought it was from Kitties, kitties to the middle line. Kitties to the line to Kitties. Yeah, it doesn't right. affect this portion of 62 no. here. Okay. That was my that right. Was right. Uh, is St. Teresa's or Kitties? It, 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 it may be to St. Teresa's or all the way to Kitties. I thought it's all the way to Kitties. Yeah. Okay. I think. I, I do hope that they do a little bit better than they did on Route 28. I mean, we're still working on the intersection down here. Well, hot topic today. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't understand it. I think it's, it's crazy. Uh, there's no, I don't, you know, like I say, I hope they, we have a little better control and do a little better on 62. Yeah. Can you, uh, would you mind explaining the uh, timing you expect this year for uh, the winter? As far as the project, uh, beginning of the project construction, I couldn't say, but my guess right now is you probably wouldn't see any fall winter construction, you'd probably see in the spring of 2002. Yeah, when's it going up to bid, Tom? July 14th. Oh, yeah. It's you, advertised. You, you won't see it this year. might see some survey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you won't see any. You won't see any digging. digging they won't be digging this year. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Reserved, uh, received notice um, that our treasure collector Joseph Doherty was recertified by uh, Mass Collectors and Treasurer Association, being a certified Mass Municipal Collector and certified treasurer, and I congratulate her on it. Okay. And it's always good to see them being recertified and having the training completed. Also, the scheduling, just looking for uh, the next um, two months, July and August, for the selections meetings is still the first and third Mondays, uh, July 2nd, uh, because July 4th falls in the middle of the week. So we're still back to our regular Monday schedule then, and July 16th. And August will be the 6th and the 20th. Unless other meetings are needed. Yeah. If uh, members of the board could confer with the town administrator in relation to what, any scheduled vacations that you might have, we don't necessarily want to announce it over cable. No, we're not a high crime area. But <laughs> could be. <laughs> it could be. You can let people know when you're coming and going. But if you, you let the town administrator know so that we have to reschedule it on the meeting, you can do that uh, 